My name's George Brill and I'm 22 years old and adventure in the outdoors has always been a huge part of my life. I think for me it all started at a very young age, as long, long ago as I can remember, with primitive survival skills, wilderness living and just generally living in the natural world and finding food and so on. Uh, from there, once I got to university and moving on through there, it became a much more physical aspect. So I got, I got into the ultra running, climbing, swimming and free diving and that sort of thing. And I think all of this together for me is, a, is kind of a philosophy of a spectrum of human potential. This idea that we've been given the most incredible bodies as human beings. And I guess it's, it's honoring that, being the best human, human animal that we can be. To me, I think the essence of adventure is living life to the full. So there's a brilliant quote by Oscar Wilde, which is that most people in life only exist. And to live is actually the rarest thing in the world. And I think it's true. Most of us are caught up in the past and the future and actually living in the moment is something that's quite rare in our modern society. I think a major part of that is going outside the comfort zone. To me, I think adventure is just that. It's becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that's something that is very valuable in our lives, particularly in modern society, where our entire lives are built around being comfortable. So about two months ago, I ran an ultra through Fiji. It was a six day ultra that went down, or five days that went down through Fiji from the north coast to the south coast. It was the most incredible countryside I've ever run through. You've got these huge rolling hills with huge grasslands, river crossings, stacks and stacks of mud, and the most friendly locals you can ever imagine. It was so supportive. Thank you very much. Hola. But it was, it was very different from running in the UK. It was absolutely brutal. The heat and then the, the constant humidity and getting on enough salt was very difficult in terms of hydration. And then it was the mud. The mud was really, really thick. We'd literally end up wading through knee-deep mud in parts. Um, but it was genuinely the most incredible experience. I would jump to do it again. In terms of planning for something like the Ultra in Fiji, obviously there's the obvious stuff you can do, like looking at maps, elevation profiles, and that sort of stuff of the run. That was difficult in this case because there wasn't a lot given to us beforehand. And then on top of that, there's dialing your nutrition, your water intake, and kit and all of that, everything you'd normally do for something like an ultra. But ultimately there's so much that can go wrong, all you can really do is prepare for what you can prepare for and then be prepared for the unpre for what you can't prepare for essentially. So be prepared for anything to happen. And I think, again, that's what makes adventure memorable for me, being, having things that go wrong and having to overcome that is what makes the experience. And I think there was a lot of that in Fiji and ultimately that's what makes it memorable. So since then, I actually went into the interior of Fiji again. I went in just with a backpack and went and spent a week with an indigenous group in there. It was a very interesting situation. Turned out I was the first white visitor to ever actually go there. And it was really interesting. It, was, it, it changed a lot of my preconceptions as to how hunter-gatherers were. And I mean, these weren't full hunter-gatherers, they were hunter-horticulturalists, but a lot of what I believed was challenged by that and it showed me the reality of living in that sort of existence. Since then, I then headed on to Bali, where I spent two months free diving, learning to free dive, which was an incredible experience. Diving on the wrecks, which is the most beautiful thing. And then also while I was there, I also did, I organized a 12 hour run. So the idea was it was raising money for plastic pollution. And there was a little loop through some of the local villages. It was a lot of fun. Um, and the idea was to run for 12 hours straight, raising money uh, for the plastic pollution thing. Another interesting one, a bit like Fiji, where the water getting enough salt on was really quite difficult. Um, but ultimately, it worked out really well. And again, a really good chance to see the indigenous uh, people of Bali. And then now, I'm currently in Malaysia, uh, living in close contact with the Batek tribe here. It's, again, it's very interesting. It's they, although they're no longer living in the forest, there's still many of the skills they're using from when they were hunter-gatherers. It's difficult to tell because I don't speak the language and they're very shy. It's kind of difficult to work out how much is going on in the background that I'm not aware of and how to get to that. But we're slowly, I'm slowly getting closer to them and they're beginning to trust me a bit more and hopefully in time, be able to go out hunting with them and learn a few more of their skills.
So in terms of advice for anyone else planning an adventure in a foreign country, I think it's really common sense. So you've got to obviously look at the process of whatever you're planning on doing and see where there might be potential issues. What really helped me was if you can get people, make from friends in the place you're going and get people on your side, find a reason for it to be relevant to them. So for example, when I did the 12 hour run in Bali, by support, raising money for plastic pollution there, it's a reason that the local restaurants wanted to get involved, involved and therefore give me food for the run and so on. Also, obviously, look out for local customs can be an issue. So even something as simple as running without a shirt in a Muslim country, that can be an issue. Uh, likewise, dangerous animals it might not be obvious. The guard dogs in Bali were an issue as I ran past. I had to really watch out for that. So just think through it and think about where there might be potential issues and work it out as it goes. But ultimately, embrace what the situation is. And, you know, that's all part of it. There's going to be issues. There's going to be local things that are different to back at home and where they might where they might cause potential issues but don't look at it as an issue look at it as part of the adventure and embrace it if i had to live somewhere else other than england and stay somewhere else for the rest of my life i genuinely don't know where i would pick i think my time in costa rica a few years ago absolutely loved it there on the jungle coast really remote you've got the jungle you've got the sea it's just an incredible place uh also love the alps uh chamonix and all the running around there is just incredible Australia, only been through very briefly, but there, there's so much potential there. I'd love to go and see that all in a bit more detail. And then there's plenty of places I haven't been that I'm sure would be way up there. So America, never been to America, and I've, there are so many places there I'd love to go and explore. But ultimately, I wouldn't be able to pick between countries. And I think the thing about adventure, it's much more down to, rather than what and where it is, it's what it means personally to you. And I think an important factor is that you can have an event, adventure is everywhere. It's about thinking differently and finding something that personally resonates with you and the memories that that creates. So I think ultimately where is not so important, it's how you do it and how you think about it that makes the difference.